Publication bias in academic and research settings is a critical issue studied under metascience. When the decision to publish or distribute a work is influenced by its results, it disturbs the equilibrium of scientific findings, skewing it towards positive results. Even in cases where the research design and execution quality is comparable, studies that yield statistically significant results are often three times more likely to be published. Than those with null results, this may result in researchers modifying their strategies to achieve statistically. Significant outcomes, such as by data dredging, numerous elements play a part in publication bias. A null result, for instance, may be considered worth publishing if it contradicts an established scientific consensus, making it newsworthy. Conversely, researchers may opt not to submit neutral or negative results, leading to a non-response bias. Other factors might include researchers presuming they've made a mistake, disinterest in a study that fails to support known findings, or an assumption that their null results will lack appeal. Five main issues or diseases threaten science as a result of these problems. Significosis, neophilia, theoria, aragorium, and disjunctivitizes. They can lead to a flood of statistically significant results, a predisposition towards novelty, a compulsion for new theories, a neglect of rigor in research, and an inclination to produce trivial and disconnected works. Identifying unpublished studies can be challenging and unsatisfactory, leading several scientific journals to require pre-registration of research projects with organizations like the Center for Open Science. Strategies such as P-curve analysis and a preference for large randomized studies over smaller, non-randomized ones due to their high potential for error and bias have also been proposed. First discussed by statistician Theodore Sterling in 1959, Publication bias refers to the phenomenon where the publication of a research study depends not only on its quality, but also on the tested hypothesis, the significance, and the direction of detected effect. False conclusions from errors in statistical tests may dominate a field's literature if negative results are not published sufficiently in worst-case scenarios. These false conclusions may be mistakenly accepted as true. Publication bias is also referred to as the file drawer effect or file, Drawer problem, a term coined by psychologist Robert Rosenthal in 1979. It describes the tendency for unsupportive results to be left unpublished in researchers' file drawers, leading to a skewed representation of research findings in published literature. Research into publication bias within the biomedical sector is expansive, with much investigation dedicated to understanding how the dissemination of results can skew the perception of a treatment's efficacy. The data suggests that positive results are more likely to be published, while negative outcomes are often left unreported in clinical trials. This was identified through examining the sequence from the submission of trial protocols to the agreement by ethics committees, then to the publication of results. A large-scale analysis focusing on the occurrence of publication bias in systematic overviews from the Cochrane Library revealed a 27 higher likelihood of including statistically positive outcomes and a 78 greater chance of inclusion for results lacking evidence of adverse effects as bias was. Also detected in Meta, analyses published in high-ranking medical journals, publication bias can seriously skew the results of meta analyses and systematic reviews as published research no longer accurately represents the available evidence. Methods to manage this issue in systematic reviews include including data from unpublished studies and gray literature. The inconsistency due to this bias can be explored using a funnel plot in which the size of the effect is plotted against precision or sample size, with expected symmetry if the bias is minimal statistical tests, such as the Eggers regression test, can be used to detect any potential azimogen, the plot, indicative of publication bias. Two meta-analyses investigating the effectiveness of the antidepressant reboxetine serve as case studies of attempts to detect publication bias in clinical trials. Positive trial data led to the drug's original approval for treating depression in several European countries, including the UK, in 2001. However, a 2010 meta-analysis concluded that its efficacy was overestimated due to publication bias, specifically from trials published by Pfizer, the drug manufacturer. A later meta-analysis in 2011 found issues with the 2010 analyses and suggested that the drug was effective for severe depression authors. Ben Goldicker and Peter Wilmshurst have provided additional examples of this ongoing issue of publication bias. John Ioannidis contends that more often than not, Research findings might predominantly be an indicator of prevailing bias. 
The factors that contribute to this bias primarily include pre-selection and the extent of tested relationships, the flexibility of research designs, definitions, outcomes, and analytical modes, trends within scientific community, and subsequent publication bias. Other variables are experimenter bias and white hat bias. The magnitude of publication bias can be put under control through superior studies, improved standards of research, and meticulous considerations of both the genuine and non-valid relationships. Superior studies usually refer to large-scale studies which either provide definitive results or test significant concepts and transpire into a low-bias meta. Analysis-enhanced research standards consist of pre-registration of protocols, registration of data collections, and compliance with it. Established protocols to dodge false positive results. Positive results the experimenter should appraise if the relationship being tested is true or not. This precaution can be taken by accurately determining the false positive report probability grounded on the statistical power of the test and revalidating. When ethically permissible, established findings of prior studies with minimal bias. In September 2004, a noteworthy development unfolded when editors of leading medical journals, such as the New England Journal of Medicine, The Lancet, Annals of Internal Medicine, and JAMA announced they would desist from publishing results of drug research subsidized by pharmaceutical companies, unless the research was registered in a public clinical trials registry from the onset, moreover. Some journals, like trials, encourage protocol publication. This perspective was supported by the World Health Organization, who, when it agreed that basic information about all clinical trials should be registered at the study's inception and make this information accessible to the public through the WHO International Clinical Trials Registry platform that trend of availing full study protocols alongside trial reports for the public is becoming increasingly prevalent. 